Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today we have some very interesting topics. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about the Ripple v SEC lawsuit, a little bit more about XRP over at the end. Then apparently the Crypto.com CEO now finally admits some stuff about their recent exploit slash hack which I think you guys need to know about. Then some new rules about crypto taxation and actually a little story about crypto taxation that I want to share. And last but not least, Google Pay and well, basically what they have going on for the next big wave for crypto. I have some thoughts on that that I'd like to share as well. Having said that, guys, if you are enjoying the daily crypto news, make sure that you press that like button. And the best thing you can do for the channel is just, um, I guess, like, maybe comment, maybe subscribe. Just do whatever makes you feel comfortable and do what you can to help out. <laughs> Having said that, let's let's take a look. So Crypto Law shared this over on their Twitter. Empower files appeal over the SEC's unresponsive FOIA results on Clayton Hinman Burger's records wants to disclose or disclosure of search methods. So what's been going on is there is this entity. I'm not exactly sure what officially it is called this entity called Empower Oversight. And what they've basically done is they took a look at what's going on with Ripple and whatnot. And what they're basically going for here is to request the SEC to explain some specific records and pieces of information. So let's quickly check this out over on the empower.us website, because again, that's where the majority of this stuff lies. What it says over here, Empower Oversight fought an administrative appeal challenging the SEC claim that no responsive record exists in several categories of Empower Oversight's Freedom of Information Act request. Two things to know. One, Empower Oversight has, I think, sued the SEC twice. How that works is I'm not officially sure if you can call it suing somebody or basically request a FOIA. What a FOIA is, is again, a Freedom of Information Act. And that, I think... Guys, I'm not a lawyer, but this is as far as I've gotten reading all these documents is that they basically use this specific request to request information that should be either available to the public or just at least available when requested for cases of potential whistle, uh, some, some stuff that's basically not completely juicy. I mean, the SEC obviously are, are responsible to let go... I guess their statements to us and whenever we do not understand something, I think as well as U.S. citizens, you'd have the right to request some additional information or additional background information. Now, the SEC apparently claims that it conducted a thorough research of the SEC's various system of records regarding conflicts of interest with crypto is unsupported. So what one of the questions at hand was from Empower Oversight was, well, we think there's a little conflict of interest with the decisions y'all have made. Give us some papers on this. Give us and do some research and give us some uh, some feedback on, on what you can find, so to speak. The SEC says, well, we did some research, but we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> In response to Empower Oversight, the SEC failed to describe the scopes of its searches. Thus, neither Empower Oversight nor the public can be assured that the SEC took reasonable steps to locate and produce responsive documents. Responsive documents, meaning the specific documents that should have popped up in the search, we don't know what the SEC looked for. We don't know what criteria they looked under. So we don't know if they actually produced responsive documents or at least attempted to because obviously they did not res uh, respond to anything. In this administrative appeal, Empower Oversight is requesting the SEC to review the SEC FOIA request specialist searches, report if any deficiencies are found, and provide sworn affidavits describing the searches in detail if the SEC still claims that no records exist. In August of 2021, Empower Oversight filed a FOIA request regarding any conflicts of interest with uh, cryptocurrencies at the SEC, where some crypto may have been promoted over others, like for example ETH. This led to a denial of a fee waiver, which was quickly appealed and overturned. After months of lack of responses from the SEC, Empower Oversight filed a lawsuit to compel the SEC to comply with its FOIA requests, and that litigation remains pending in the Federal District Court of Eastern District of Virginia, and the SEC's response to Empower Oversight's lawsuit is due February 11th of this year. If you have first-hand information you'd like to discuss, you know, let them know over there, but 
that's exactly what is going on right now. And Crypto Law had to obviously share that as apparently they filed an appeal over the unresponsive FOIA results on Clayton Hinman Berger, uh, one's disclosure of search methods. So again, the update being, we need to get something by February 11th. That was the that uh, basically the uh, SEC response to the specific motion. I, I, can we call it motion to compel? I guess lawsuit to compel something, which is the, the get-go. And the motion to compel or the lawsuit to compel is to gather the specific FOIA information. However, right now, as far as I know, huh, what happened now is that the SEC did come back, uh, but they basically said we couldn't find nothing. So we did some research, but we couldn't find nothing. So once more, Empire Oversight sued the SEC. I might go for a little bit of a heavy title, but that's because I got to put some emphasis on there. And let's be honest here, completely open to freaking everybody here. I have no idea what to title this properly, right? My English is not good enough to think of something. <laughs> How do I say this? Um, Empower, Ripple XRP, Empower US filed an appeal for the SEC's unresponsive FOIA. That's, I don't know, that doesn't sound like something I would personally click because I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but bear with me that the title might be a little bit strange, but I, I, I guess it still fits, you know, just the dates might be a little bit off, but y you guys will see something. Please bear with me, all right? It's not easy to think of titles now and then. I do four videos-ish a day. You know how hard it becomes after thousands upon thousands to think of the, the most critical title? It, it's not easy for me. So um, bear with me, all right? I'm being real with y'all. Charles says uh, this over on his Twitter. Scoop. Judge Nedburn, let me actually put in a timestamp real quick. You guys are also, <laughs> oh man, if, if only you guys could see how sometimes I struggle with some of this stuff recording these videos. Man, I, I must admit, I love what I do. I love making these videos for y'all, but there's a couple of parts which are difficult. And when I see some people in the comment section say, oh, it's so easy, it's so easy. A lot of these things are um, are, 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 are rather strange, but we'll, we'll get to that a different day. Now, Judge Nedburn in the SEC v. Ripple has ruled on Ripple's request for privileged SC documents in determining XRP as a security? Mixed ruling for Ripple, but Judge says all drafts of former SEC officials Bill Hinman's now famous speech all constitutes a security will be admitted as evidence, which I think is rather a strange sentence to have. Ripple is looking to show the Hinman speech indicated SEC bias in favor of competitors such as Ethereum. Hinman has denied any states or sorry, yes, and states that those comments were his own opinion, not official SEC position, story developing. So, let's get it once more. Judge Nedburn, in this case, has ruled on Ripple's request for the information, for the DPP information. It's a mixed ruling, but the judge says that all drafts of the former Bill Hinman speech are now going to be evidence. And so, actually, the long story short is the speech itself is an opinion, the judge said, but everything surrounding it, you guys can see because it's, of course, SEC deliberations, but it, it's kind of difficult to see exactly how these things go. What I'm mostly wondering about is this right here. The real question is, how would the judge actually force the SEC to comply with their orders to hand over uh, the ETH and XRP-related documents? I wonder, you know, all the documents regarding Bitcoin, ETH, and XRP, when are we going to get that? And has it actually been discussed? Because whenever we like, checked out the previous ruling, basically... I kind of noticed there there really wasn't that much information in it. Uh, then again, guys, I'm not a lawyer. I do not know. But I'm, I'm also wondering about that. And I'll update once we get some more. Which is why I'm recommending you all to be subscribed to the channel. And of course, and this is most important of everything, have the notification bell on. A lot of y'all are forgetting that the moment this lawsuit settles, you got to be there or be squared. That's literally how it's going to be. Most likely, if you're not there within a couple of minutes, too bad. And so make sure that you at least get the notifications for my channel as you can always decide to ignore my videos. That's all fine by me. No worries. But at least you get the notification so you have the chance to ignore it. So put it onto all notifications, not just selected some, or you're going to miss out. I'm saying this for you. The notification for me doesn't really matter too much. It's about you guys. Um, in case you missed it, we're excited to bring our proposal for NFT capabilities to life on the NFT DevNet. Devs can now test building NFT apps and use cases in a beta environment. Learn how to get started. So once more, I'm not necessarily so excited for it because NFTs are going to crowd up the network, but it's going to bring a lot of popularity to XRP and Ledger, and so, so I'm kind of happy with that. I saw this, and I instantly clicked it. You guys can see 10 seconds ago. Wow, you know? Speedy Gonzalez. I saw it. Bam! Like that. Um, XRP is caught in a wave of selling that could take it to BS. Makes absolutely no sense. Um, it's all a, a matter of zooming out. It's all a matter of perspective. These guys are saying so much selling... 
all relative. You can also say the exact opposite thing. XP is in a really bullish rally if you kind of zoom out in a certain way. It's all a narrative. So please don't think that this is something you got to pay attention to or worry about, guys. If it really was something in terms of structure that I'd really worry about, I'd tell you. But almost nothing in this similar fashion is really something spectacular, as is the Bitcoin price, which is taking XP down. It's not really moving on its own whatsoever, and it's most likely not going to do so in the near future, unless something interesting happens. But right now, mostly Cardano is going down. I'm seeing it actually. Look at that. Minus 9.5%. Over the hour, majority of cryptos are up. But by the time I upload this video, it might be hours later, things could have actually changed. Uh, now, Crypto.com CEO confirms hundreds of accounts were hacked, hedges on other details. Got to put in another timestamp here. This is actually a really critical point because um, what I saw before was that this, the, the, the guy basically ba basically denied anything that happened. They said all funds were fine, yada, yada. Now, all of a sudden, they're changing the verdict a little bit. But they're saying no customer funds were lost, which is why I'm like, hmm, why is the article title changed? Whatever. Remember what I told you yesterday, all right? Apparently, he's finally confirmed that hundreds of users' accounts were compromised, but no funds were stolen. Then again, the title here says that funds were stolen as a result. So I'm not exactly sure. Let's quickly see it again. Well, we saw one of the analytics firms say that some of the money was trying to be laundered. But I'm not exactly sure how they're looking at this specific, um, how looking at this specific tweet and kind of getting the, the, the conclusion from there that he is now admitting that users' accounts were hacked and funds were stolen. Because he literally says no funds were lost. Uh, which is obviously, as far as we know, not the truth. As a couple of analytics companies are saying that it's the case. However, I guess they just included his Twitter for the before, right? No, this is a follow-up. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Okay, okay, I guess. Well, I guess I understand the story now. I was like a little bit confused. What it says right here is they do admit that money was lost. Um, here, what they mean with this, no customer funds were lost, is that you are not going to lose money because they're going to take the hit. How I see this is we don't really want to let the world know that our money got stolen, that we actually got hacked for money. We're just going to put it like, oh, you know, there, some stuff happened. We had some downtime because he's literally doing half-assed stuff, if you ask me. Here it just says 400 accounts. Have Wait, let me... Oh, no, of course. I mean, if, if they're going to take the hit. I want to say I should actually take my own account. Uh, but what I've said before, guys, is that I, I really recommend people to look into crypto.com further. I'm going to take that a step back and say, guys, if you're going to get some yield on any specific protocol, spread it out. So go for a little bit for crypto.com, go a little bit for the stuff I mentioned over on Patreon, which is basically yield farming on different protocols, like maybe curve through something and whatnot. Just spread it out. I think it's going to be the best choice. Maybe have someone Binance, maybe have someone BitTrue and so forth and so on. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a specific video on this soon or basically explain to you guys the different options that we have. Uh, but make sure you press the like button and let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more yield type of updates because I'm uh, literally spending four hours a day looking into it and asking people about it. Uh, I guess it doesn't really take much time to ask people about it, but I've been in a lot of discussions regarding what the best plan of action is, as everything, of course, has its own risk and uh, its own benefits, I guess. Then apparently in Alabama, what they're trying to do is get crypto out of property tax. Good sides and bad sides. Now, good side being obviously that... Um, well, let's actually just read it out. Alabama introduces legislation to exempt crypto from property tax. I want to say good thing is that it might basically become a very profitable thing for people, right? From the get-go, exempt. Yes, but no. Because if this were to be the case, it could fall under something else. And that might actually be worse. Now, as of this point, Alabama broadly imposes its ad valorem tax on all property, unless expressly exempt. Under current law, several other forms of currency are enumerated as exempt, such as money on deposit in any bank or banking institution. And the bill defines virtual currency as digital representation of value other than a representation of the United States dollar or foreign currency that functions as a unit of account, store of value, or medium of exchange. A similar bill failed to pass at the, uh, the, the Alabama legislature last year, meaning we don't know exactly what's going to happen, we don't know what's going to come, but I think it's a progressive stance from Alabama and I guess the definition that they gave it as well, it's going to be interesting to see what cryptocurrency specifically they include in that. As obviously not all of them, um, def or I guess followed by the definitions of money, which are a couple of these things, units of account, store of value, medium of exchange. But all right, I digress. You know, it's a, it's a fun situation. I just see progressiveness in that, even though it's been proposed last year, apparently as well. It's just a good, steps in a good direction, you know? I like it. 
And then, uh, last but not least, Google. We actually talked about this briefly already, but Google Pay may add crypto cards to attract its next billion users. What I've been thinking about is two things. One is they will basically add their own card there for in a crypto manner. Uh, but I'm also thinking maybe they're trying to say the crypto.com, the potentially Casta and all those different cards in the in the in the future, maybe the Binance card, that they're gonna actually allow them to be used with Google Pay as well. Because as far as I know, you can't use those cards in there yet. Um, then again, I have never really tried, so I don't really know. After bending its Plex banking plans with Google Pay, Google is hiring new executives to push for a new big strategy to um, to compete with Apple Pay. Google Pay will become the comprehensive digital wallet, which again kind of made me disclude what I just thought, because what I think now is they're just trying to build a super wallet, which by the way would be amazing if they did. Now from the perspective of security or anything like that, that would actually be awful, but I mean... They have the biggest chance to get main adoption in a Web3 sense because they have Google Chrome and all those guys. So if they built their own Web3 wallet that basically coincides with Apple Pay and whatnot, or Google Pay, I mean, and whatnot, that could be the biggest thing ever. It could be so huge. It could be such a huge and easy thing to get into. Um, from that perspective, I'd really like to have Google stock or the company that they're doing that with stock specifically. Unfortunately, that's not... Um, really up to us as of this point anymore because buying google stock is gonna let's say get you a 15 percent return over the next three years if they really do roll this out wow crazy aren't it you can get that in five days with crypto <laughs> we're spoiled um but yeah that would really be amazing and i'm looking forward to that because it's going to put a lot of crypto um users on the map from that point on forward it's going to be susceptible to a lot of hacks and a lot of trouble but it's a step towards the right direction as well so i am excited for that all right guys that was it for today's video hopefully you all enjoyed it if you did Make sure you press the like button and subscribe, and I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today.